This is episode 62 with Deborah Silverman. Every ounce of your being is made up of molecules of energy vibrating at different frequencies that determine your experience here on planet Earth. This podcast intention is to inspire you to elevate the vibration of your energy for yourself and for all of us. This is The Elevator. Hop on in and ride into the ethers with Britt and Tara of Elevate the Globe. I, I'd probably say, let there be tears. Let your heart open and cry. Let the compassion be the center of your universe and watch the world change. You have to start by being compassionate for yourself. But the person that bugs you the most and the people that are the most destructive and the ones that are the most offensive, try and see if you can't open your heart. That would be, if you just practice that every day, it will change all of us. Welcome back, guys. And before we get into this incredible episode, we are so excited to thank our sponsor, FabFitFun. So has anybody else out there tried FabFitFun yet? Let us know. But if you do not already know about it, it's a seasonal box with full-size beauty, fitness, and lifestyle products. And the boxes that we received are absolutely epic. And because each season's box features a variety of different non-toxic and I mean, they have so many amazing products that we love. We have been obsessed and found some new products that we discovered we didn't know about before that really we can't even live without now. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I actually found this Levito body lotion in my box that, I mean, it's it's vegan, it's gluten-free, it's organic, it's dermatologist tested. It's it's amazing. Cruelty-free. Cruelty-free, yeah. It's it's great because um, I'm always looking for new products that are vegan and make my body feel good. And it's fun to have a new brand to add to the arsenal. So. Yes. And lotions are hard to find. They're hard to find. There Especially. Aren't, there aren't that many. And you know, you have these little like receptors in your body. And so you always really want to be careful on your skin, what you're putting on there. So it does, you can actually feel a crazy difference when you put something on your body that is vegan, organic, and like clean. It's one of the places that I feel the most um, difference when you put something on that's toxic versus not like you can actually feel it so super cool love that that FabFitFun is really including a lot of these kinds of brands so true so we are so excited for more of you guys to try it don't miss out they sell out super fast And we're so excited they gave the Elevator listeners a discount code so you can actually save $10 off your first box. So you can check it out at fabfitfun.com and use the code ELEVATOR to get that $10 off. And it actually makes it only $39.99 for over $200 worth of values. So check it out. Again, it's fabfitfun, code ELEVATOR. And you deserve to treat yourself. So if you guys get the Fab Fit Fun boxes, definitely tag us and let us know what you think and what you get. And we're excited for more of you to try it. So you guys, we are so excited for today's episode guest, Deborah Silverman, who is one of my favorite astrologers and has been for a very long time. So it was so fun to get her on a Skype call and chat with her about all things astrology and she's just so fun and has such a like jovial like wacky spirit that is just (laughs) so uplifting so we're excited for you to listen to this episode yes this is seriously such a fun one filled with so much great information whether you're new to astrology or an astrology buff there is so much that you will get out of this episode and just so much of what she kind of channels through is very uplifting and inspiring and expand. It's very expansive mm-hmm. energy. Mm-hmm. I love just how free she is and how she explains everything. It's yeah. really easy to understand. And, and yeah, she's just such a sweet soul. So we're so excited for you guys to listen and we're so honored to have her today. So have fun listening. So we'd love to see all of your favorite parts of this episode screenshotted and tagged at Elevate the Globe on Instagram so we can repost them. And if you haven't actually done a review yet for The Elevator, we'd love to see what you have to say. And if you screenshot that review 
and send it to the elevator at elevatetheglobe.com. We will forward you our magic morning checklist. So we love, love, love to see all of the response for every single episode. And we just love that you guys are enjoying the podcast as much as we are creating it. So thank you. And again, enjoy the show. Welcome back, everyone, to The Elevator, and we are so excited today to welcome Deborah Silverman to the podcast. So welcome, Deborah. Thanks so much for being here. My pleasure. Awesome. So a little bit more about Deborah. Deborah is part astrologer, part psychologist, and part comedian, all real, (laughs) which is my favorite bio ever. (laughs) Um, But really, she helps people turn on their own inner observer and see things in a totally objective way. So she has been in private practice for over 40 years and uses astrology and also her own system called the four elements, which we're very excited to talk about. And you have written a book, um, done many magazine columns and and hosts a radio show and has a YouTube channel with over 7 million views. So Deborah is really our go-to for astrology and we are so excited to, to learn more. That's so sweet. I listened to that bio and I'm like, I want to meet her. <laughs> Some person that's interested in all the same things I'm interested in. <laughs> oh, I love it, right? Just your own biggest fan. <laughs> I'm in love with astrology. I'm in love with astrology. Oh, I know. I feel you on that. And so we would love, Deva, for you just to give a little elevator pitch, because this is the elevator, of who you are from your own words and what it is that you, you're you about, loving about the world, you know, especially currently. I am a example of life in its joyous expression. Like I made a pact with myself because I grew up in a very oy, Jewish, miserable place. So I became the president of the Jews for Joy Club, which changed my temperament. Now I've turned into a joy machine because this place is so sad and so difficult that if we could just put the big picture in perspective and look at the stars and keep our attention up to the elevator, everything's going to work out. So I have really practiced. It's not natural. My natural inclination is to sink into gravity and go, oh, it's so hard. Like I have a natural whiner. They call it a kvetch in Yiddish. I have a part of me that's it's like, ah, uh, uh. And I've really had to learn the muscle to say to myself, Deborah, you are going to be an example this lifetime to change your lineage, to change the history, mm-hmm. her, you know, that whole story of poor people in being frustrated by not being themselves or not knowing what they're supposed to do here this life. So I'm like a fire starter and get people back on track and I turn them on to funny and then I watch them remember that, oh, so it's not that bad after all. <laughs> I love that. I so love much. that. Oops. That was my elevator. <laughs> okay. Girl. That was good. Wanna, wait, but I want to hear why you love astrology so much, little miss. Double <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's it's just been something I've always been really drawn to, even since I was a kid. And it, I love that for me, it's like a structure and it helps me understand what's going on in the world so that I can utilize my energy to um, be aligned versus feeling like I'm a victim of circumstance, um, that I can actually use the energy to create what I want. And I just find it very interesting because I find that it's very true to people. So, you know, if there's something in me that's always been like, I've categorized people on a timeline so I can remember who they are by their birthdays. And and I, I find that I like love to pull people's charts because... And, and like look at their stuff because it, it find that it's really accurate and it really does help people understand what they're working with so that they can become better versions of themselves. I love that. I'm going to borrow your elevator. That was, <laughs> that was really good. And it is true that when you study someone's chart, the compassion increases. Like, oh, when my brother was studying my dad's chart, my dad had no ear in his chart. And all my brother's life, he just wanted him to talk. And my dad didn't like to talk. Mm-hmm. And he finally learned that my dad had no ear, which is the airheads, the verbalized people. And then he was like, all these years I've been trying to make him wrong. It was such a moment. Wow. So that kind of, that kind of compassion for when you understand like, they're not trying to hurt you. They're just blunt and loud, or they're not trying to be secretive. They're just watery and soft. Like stop making them wrong. Right. right. Oh, I really like that. 
Yeah, just accepting people for who they are and understanding that that's just literally the makeup of who they are in this lifetime. I think the best question, if I was in the elevator with you and I was me there, Deborah Silverman, I'd say to her, <laughs> this is my endless question. This doesn't have an answer. But how come it works? Like, how is it that you're a double Libra mm-hmm. and you're a Cancer and you can see your personality, it's lifetime, and it's the stars influencing the mode of your, or like, beep, 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 beep. That's why astrology went to the, you know, completely disbelievers when science came in, even though already mm-hmm. astrology yeah. is the oldest science on earth. Like the scientists had to deduce where is this planet moving and what's the timeline and who knew how to establish that Venus moved at these many degrees a month and this planet moved at this. Like that was pure math and that was way in the beginning. In the beginning of time. I love it. Isn't that cool? That is really cool. I love that. So then how do you kind of further explain how it works and how all of these human bodies are kind of affected by it all. (laughs) So that's the mystery. That's why I said we got to get out of the elevator for that one, because that's a big, hard question. But the short answer is the waters influence the waters, the moon influences the waters on earth. So we know where the tides are going to come in and go out simply by knowing where the moon is. We know what your mood will be by where the moon is. And I have this platform called the star community. I don't know if you ladies know about it, but it's, it's a very cheap, like it's $20 a month and you get you'll download a, where's the planet today? Where's the moon? When is the retrograde happening? When is the eclipse? So you stay attentive to those details and then you're in sync. So if it's true, the moon influences, which is proven the tide and the full moon increases the amount of accidents and hospital stays and all kinds of indicators, then we have to just suspend our left brain because my left brain goes beep, 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 beep. What do you mean the moon influences the water? Like if I let my logical self get too carried away, I'm out of the elevator again. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. But wait, so before we kind of go into, you know, a little bit more about astrology, we'd love to hear kind of your own journey of how you found astrology and how that you've kind of you made a whole business out of it and a life out of it. You're really living in the stars, if you will. So, <laughs> oh, I love you that. Know? So I, I was like you from a really young age. I was completely fascinated. Like I did all my friends when I was a kid and I would memorize to this day, like Rhonda Kramer and Randy Milgram and Matt Watts. I knew all of, I can't even believe I was so little and I was so fascinated, <laughs> but I didn't really understand. All I knew was the moon and the sun at that time. Uh-huh. Cause I had this wow. little book that I like, ruined the pages because I, I don't know, I was upset. <laughs> and, then, and then I reached 20 and fate would have it. This woman arrived in my life. It's such a crazy story. I was in university in Toronto. She was at school with me. She had she was older than me. She was also Jewish, a Gemini, an American. A dan- everything about us was the same. And she was an astrologer, but I wasn't. And she said, if you would let me do a reading for you, I was like, what does it mean? So she did a reading for me. I then pulled her to my family's house in Detroit at the Jewish holiday. She drove from Toronto to my family. And I have this like, Woody Allen wouldn't have to change the clothes. It was so, the, the family was so, <laughs> like, they were loud and they were uninhibited and they just were. But she sat at the table and she went across the whole room and did every member of my family. And I was like, what just happened? Like, I describe them better than she did. Like, you get pissed off and you don't ever talk and you cry all the time. And I was like, what did you just do? So we got back in the car and drove back to Toronto. And I said, please, I want to learn what you did. And I was 20 at the time. And she proceeded to teach me over three days on a car journey across Canada. It's a crazy story. And at the end of the three days, I was doing readings. Wow. And so it was clearly like if a little kid was sitting at a piano who never had lessons and then you heard them playing, you'd be like, that's a memory. I had a memory. I think I was in Egypt and I had a really long nap. And I was really pretty. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. I just made that up. I think I was <laughs> definitely in the motherland or mothership of the astrology because I learned it so quickly. And here it is. Fast forward. It is now 40 years later. And I've never gotten bored. I've never gotten tired of it. I'm completely in awe of its accuracy. So that's a funny story to tell you. I can't explain how I found it except to say fate was in my blood. And some of you listening, you have a very strong fate. You knew you were a musician. You knew you would get married young. You knew you would never get married. Like There's things you knew. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. there's some of you that are so confused and you're like, where's the map? I can't find the map. And you're confused. And that's why you call an astrologer because some people really came in with fate 
like you two meeting at 12 years old in ballet. Those are faded moments where I could just see the two of you. Cute little t- girls in their little leotards, and they just like each other so much. Fast forward, they'd be on a podcast in an elevator teaching everyone how to elevate. Who would have known? <laughs> Who would have known? I wouldn't have known then. No. no. All the fate. <laughs> That's oh, wow. so cool. I love that story. And so you just started doing readings after that, and it just kind of all developed from there, I imagine. I think part of it is like one of the biggest lessons for you millennials is just do the same thing over and over and over, even when it gets boring. I've been doing readings for literally 40 years. So eventually one day someone said to me, it's a funny story. Her name was Destiny. And I have a meeting every oh. Monday morning with Destiny. Is that crazy? She's my online teacher. She taught me how to take my stuff online. If any of you are interested, she's amazing. Oh, wow. Yeah. So she called me. I did a reading for her. It's a funny story. And at the end of the reading, she because she'd done all these, she was one of those astrology buffs who gets readings all the time. And she was like, whoa, this was really good. I was like, thanks. And then she was like, she was like, have you ever thought of doing an online school? And I was like, a what? Like I couldn't do Instagram. I don't know anything about the stupid computer world. I'm a, I'm a hundred years old. So she said, if you bring me your material, I will take it online. And you know what happened? Mm. We have hundreds of women and men from around the world taking my astrology course. There you so go. So incredible. Oh, wow. All because of the internet, because of what you're doing, like these podcasts. And we live in an, inter- we live in an Aquarian age, which means the electronic world, the, the electromagnetic force field, the level of our communication is not limited to our words, to our visual. It's a vibration. That's what you're doing. Mm-hmm. I read your thing. <laughs> you're changing the vibration. And that's what I've been doing too. So. If you want a little vibration shift, go get my book. You guys tell me you read it. Tell us about it. Yeah, that. no, I loved I loved it. It's called The Four Elements. And no, it's, no, it's not. It's so cool. Oh my God, double lever. You're making stuff is, up. It's called The Missing Element. The what? The Missing Element. The Missing Element. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's so, so, I literally have it in my on my bookshelf and I'm like, can't. That's a different book, isn't it? The Four Elements or is that just like a saying? That was just you cute. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, no, the missing element. And I read it and I I did, I like figured out that I have really only one planet in fire. So like you go through your whole chart, right? This was a long time ago. So I, this was like a couple years ago (laughs) that I read this and, and I remember going, oh my gosh, I really don't have any fire in my chart at all. So you give, like you give, you kind of take people through how to actually figure out what you're missing and then what to do. On page 42, the little yeah. test and you figure out. Yeah. And so it was like, you know, all these things to to create more fire. And it's funny because I look now at a lot of the people that I attract in terms of relationships and a lot of them have a lot of fire in their chart. Earth was my second to least kind of um, element in there. And I, I, I love earth people too, because it helps me ground. I've got a lot of air and, and water in my chart, a lot, a lot of air. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're calling the book The Four Elements. The name just changed because her ears See? changed the story. <laughs> well, I literally it's even the, have it right, written down as the wrong thing. It's just evidence of you being double yeah. deeper. You're double deeper. You're just, woo. I know. And, and so the point of that story is you can mm-hmm. find your missing element. Yeah. And that's what the book is all about. And that's the first step is just getting to know yourself. That's what my school's about. Like I get so, I'm just nosy. Yeah. Short answers. I love listening to people's stories. Like I love these podcasts, but I get to look, they're so pretty. Has anybody seen these two women? <laughs> oh, thank you. You're both so, so pretty, sweet. but that's beside the point. Just, just an aside. Okay, go ahead. Ask me anything. <laughs> so I guess, how did you kind of come to write this book and realize how important it is for people to understand their missing element? You know, I think because of my crazy family and then going to graduate school to, for clinical psychology, I was always studying people like what makes someone so different than another? And why do we not do what's healthy for us? That was one of my biggest questions in graduate school. Like, you know what to eat and you know what to exercise and you know what relationships work and don't work, but we don't. It's so fascinating. So my fascination has followed me around since I was really young, staring at people and being, you know, it's not so much now in my sixties, but definitely like staring at people and being nosy. And that compelled me to write the book. Like I have to share this information that there is a way I make the analogy that there's four wheels in a car. And if one of the wheels goes down, the whole car goes off. So you have to have all four elements. And it's, it's very simple. There's the emotional body's water, which is cancer the highly sensitive people in the world who hate that about themselves. They wish it would go away, but good luck. <laughs> then there's 
Then there's the air people, the airheads who make up stories. Uh-huh. They make up something. Uh-huh. They just forget their name. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. But then they get, they're so charming and cute. They get away with it. Then there's the earth people who are such critics and they're so obsessed with getting it right and making themselves feel wrong and cleaning and organizing and money. And they're just so grounded. And then there's those fire people who are just wild and funny who make everything louder and they have no effect. And we love those people for some of the time. So we have all four of these elements. And that was where the book came from. Like, how do I help people? How do I make it easy for someone to get back online and become an example of a healthy human? Because we are so victimized by our childhoods. Like everyone's broken before they get fixed. I mean, who made that up? I don't know. (laughs) It's ridiculous. Like, why can't you come in healthy? That was the dumbest thing. Who made that up? Like, you learn from your mistakes. Why not get a memo? <laughs> this relationship is now over. Heads up. You've got about a month to go. Thanks for telling me. <laughs> oh, oh, I love it. Wouldn't that be amazing if you could genuinely know if you're in the right or wrong relationship and what the timing was and what the lesson was, what the karma was? Yes. And it all a little memo. <laughs> yeah. Just with every person that you meet, here's the memo on them. <laughs> So cool. I've always thought if you could put your finger in a machine and it would just like, it would show you their chart and tell you where you knew them and what the dynamics were. <laughs> oh, that would be amazing. <laughs> I feel like that's going to be an invention. Can you invent that, please? <laughs> it would be all based on karma, Akashic uh-huh. records, the uh-huh. chart, the chakra energy, your compatibility, and you would just it would make life so easy. <laughs> oh my God, I love that. <laughs> We are quickly interrupting this incredible conversation to chat with you about our sponsor, Sugar Bear Hair. And we are so excited about this product. We've been talking about it. And Tara and I are actually doing a challenge, a three-month challenge with these vegan gummy vitamins. And we've been taking two a day and have been already seeing amazing results. So we wanted to share it with you guys and see if more of you want to do it with us. Yeah. And we're actually, so we're doing this with the women's multi and the sugar bear sleep. And we're doing, so we're doing the woman's multi in the morning and the sugar bear sleep at night. And you can actually get a three-month supply on their website and you get a little wooden brush and you get a little pouch for all your vitamins. So it's very very cool. And we encourage you guys to do this with us. So check it out over at sugarbearhair.com slash elevate the globe. And you will see our favorite products there. Again, that's sugarbearhair.com slash elevate the globe. Tag us on Instagram when you get it and let us know who is doing this three month challenge to increase your vitality, your nutrients, feel better, sleep better, have more beautiful hair and more beautiful skin. So again, that's sugarbearhair.com slash elevate the globe. Someone that was just here with us in Hawaii, who I, this happens to me rarely because people always think they know me, but I met him and I was like, oh my God, like, I think you were my kid or something, or maybe you were my husband. I don't know. But it was a weird feeling, and I wish I had that machine. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I need to get to the bottom of this. <laughs> it's annoying when you know there's some karma involved yes. and that you're in such a deep state of familiarity, but you have no content. Right? So how, do, how, are, you, how are you using then astrology to kind of figure that stuff out? Well, there's something in astrology called harmonics, mm-hmm. where you fit through people's charts. You probably want to know about this. If there's one planet in your chart, let's say you have sun at one degree of Libra Mm -hmm. and your best friend's moon is at one degree of Libra. That's an immediate karmic agreement. As soon it's called harmonics. Uh, As soon as two planets are at the same degree, you know, they're resonating with a similar frequency and there's total compatibility. Like, Oh, I get why you're so indecisive. Isn't your moon in Libra, your sun's in cancer. Yes. Yeah. So your sun, your moon is the same as your Libra yep. sun. That's extreme compatibility. And Carl Jung, when the moon is the same as the sun of someone else, there's an immediate compa- cause you understand when she's indecisive. You're like, Oh, take your time. <laughs> so true. <laughs> it is nice. Yeah. <laughs> no, we do feel so like she- the yin and the yang, mm-hmm. but I, I hadn't heard that before about the actual degrees too. So interesting. That's- that's what you learn when you take my school. That's an extra credit class because it's not that important. But for a beginner, you can go find out. And then you guys are going to love this in 
July, I'm coming out with a new product called Stars and Cards. Ooh. Ooh. So it's the kind of, so you, <laughs> so on one hand, you use the chart to find your progressed moon, like just the one indicator of the cycle you're in right now, which is pretty easy to find and new for you to find out about. And then my good friend Colette Baron Reed, who you should have on your show, is a she does cards. You probably know them on Hay House. She produces a lot of um, divination cards, oracle okay. cards. So we have a series. You buy it and you learn how to find your progressed moon. Use the cards and answer all your questions. Ooh. Oh my gosh, I love that combination. And you're the first people I told it to. Oh, oh, wow. Thank you. <laughs> Cut off press in and out. I love it. So cool. <laughs> do you actually read the tarot? Do you do you work with the tarot, Deborah? Do you know that the tarot is completely related to astrology? Yes. And you know what? I'm thinking back about something you've done like webinars on this, haven't you? And I have listened to one of them on my drive home from San Francisco once. And I remember it literally opened up something in my mind that was like, my masculine energy is trying to talk to my feminine energy. And it's not, and it's like, you were asking something about like, I forget what card it was related to, but you were like, have the feminine talk to the masculine. And I was doing it in the car and I was like, she's so upset, you know, and like all these things that I was having this like breakthrough and I told Brit. So anyway, you've been part of my journey for a while, Deborah. This is so fun. But yeah, it's all related. And that particular topic, there's 22 major arcana in the deck Mm -hmm. of the Tarot deck Mm -hmm. and 10 of them are planets and 12 of them are signs. So that was in the 15th century. We just found Pluto in 1930, but they knew back then to leave the Pluto card was the death card. And Pluto Ugh. rules death. And that is so bizarre that they were so ancient in their wisdom base. They had such access that they were preparing for the future for 300 years. Like, isn't that crazy? That is wild. It really is. It just makes, makes you know that magic is real. And that's the answer to the question of how does astrology work? We don't really know, but we know that magic is real. And the older I get, the more I see it. And I'm on this cleanse. So I'm in an altered state anyway. So I'm feeling like I haven't eaten in days. I'm like, well. I could probably levitate here in just a minute. Or two. <laughs> funny, I gotta. You know that funny video on YouTube where the kid goes, "I feel funny." Is this real? Oh my gosh, yes. Is this ever gonna end? That's exactly how I feel. <laughs> he was like coming off of the dentist, yeah, uh, laughing gas or something. <laughs> So funny. Well, you look amazing, by the way, and you are so beautiful. And I love that you live in, you say you live in Kauai, right? And Denver, kind of half and half. And so, so did you like choose those places to live based on your chart too? Well, see, this is, how old are you guys? 33, Mm -hmm. both of us. Yes. So fate probably, oh, that's, you're born the same year. So 30 years ago, you probably all had said a return. Do you know about Mm -hmm. that? Did everything change when you were 29? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Everything. It's so accurate. So the answer to how did I move here? It was my Saturn return. I bought a home here. So that was um, the success of my school, which is making lots of people learn how to wake up. But I don't think, like we think we choose things. This is a big conversation for an elevator. We think we choose where to live and you think you choose your boyfriend and you think you choose your dog, but that's not true. (laughs) I know. It chooses you. (laughs) Yeah. And then you get a vote. Then you can say to your, you know, your boyfriend, like, you know what, this isn't working. Or you can say to your, where you're living, I hate living here, but those circumstances appeared. Now, did I choose Hawaii? It was a very strong prayer and I've been consistently in love with this place, but it took a lot of work and dreaming to make me have this fulfillment of a house where I, you know, wake up in the morning and go, sometimes I pinch myself like, this is crazy. (laughs) But you guys have that to look forward to. The, here's the message I want to give millennials. One, study astrology. Get to know mm-hmm. yourself. Because if you don't have the formula of your nature, you will bump into the stupidest stories. I call them stupid stories in my book, The Missing Element. They're stupid. You'll bump into stupid stories and you'll be like, I'm here again. I'm all convinced. You'll do that thing. <laughs> <laughs> so that's number one is get to know yourself and fall in love with your fate. That's number one. Love. Number two, consciously stay awake. So if you need therapy or you need coaching or you need counsel or you listen to podcasts, but you must do your work. It's not enough just to listen to us. You've got to go do your study and your yoga and you're eating well, and you're exercising, like all that stuff. And you know, (laughs) thank you for saying that. Yes. But no one tells you that in school. And then the third one, and the last that's so important is you've got to say yes to everything until you say no, but don't say no so quick. Mm, I really like that. 
even if it's wrong, even if you end up with the stupidest date in the world or you're living <laughs> in the wrong house, then back up and don't be embarrassed by saying that was a stupid story. Sorry. The more I have so many stupid stories, but I finally got it right. Yeah. Yeah. You live in Kauai. And Kauai is a, a chakra point of the earth, right? It's the heart chakra, is it not? So do you, do you feel that energy in, in Kauai? Yeah, I'm in love. I'm in love. I'm in love. And I have a cute dog somewhere here who helps with the love factor. But the point of that story is, yeah, yes. I ended up, you guys, if you have a dream, the biggest thing that no one tells anyone mm-hmm. is you do the work. Absolutely. Do the work. I call it spiritual spiritual. Do it. It's not, it's not enough to be spiritual. You've got to go do the work, which means telling the truth. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not happy. I'm lonely. I'm scared. I look pretty, but I'm really sad on the inside. Or I really feel like I haven't done the work and I'm going to be, or the flip side is, you know what? I really know that I'm pretty and I love my life and I love my kid and I love my husband and I feel bad about it, but it's just the truth. (laughs) Wait, are you talking to both of us right now? (laughs) (laughs) Oh man. I feel like I have both of those dialogues going on in my head at the same time. But if you have joy, it's not easy to be in the happy, the Jews for joy club. People don't know how to be happy. To sustain peace mm-hmm. is the hardest, it's double Libra, Moon and Libra. It's the hardest thing in the whole wide world. But as you practice the actual meditative yogic practice of simplistic breath, the pleasure of being in a body, drinking water, remembering your sheets are soft, giving thanks for every stupid thing you have, even the stuff you don't like. Mm. Just keep saying, I'm so thankful. I don't really believe this, but I'm faking it. I'm so <laughs> thankful that I got this stupid illness. I'm so thankful that I'm like, just lie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? You got to fake it till you make it sometimes. <laughs> you guys laugh, but it was true. I had to lie. I just pretended. Even now, I pretend I'm friendly. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I'm not really friendly. I really like to be alone or with my partner or with my few people. But when I'm socializing, I can pretend for about half an hour. <laughs> and that's like, uh-oh, beep, 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 Because the older you get, the less you're interested. It's really you're true. You're less interested? You're less interested in ever trying to make anyone happy. You're like, you like run home because you can't wait to be alone with your slippers. Like, it's the, it's the eldership includes... Um, What's that called? Introversion. Mm-hmm. No one knows this. I'm oh. telling you. I didn't know. I'm a Gemini yeah. with Libra, Libra rising. I'm like, hey, <laughs> but not anymore. <laughs> but I can fake it and alcohol helps. You know, you can make yourself a little friendlier with a little sip of alcohol. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it. Uh, well, you're amazing. You know, isn't, isn't it true? You go to a party and you make yourself social. Yeah, you got to be social sometimes, and you got to get you got to get out of the of the. You know, I think it's important to be social, especially in this Aquarian age. You know, it's just it's an age of community and being out yeah. out there. But I think it's great to in, go back and and kind of be alone with yourself and do a lot of your own inner work, spiritual work too. But it's like we got to be sharing this stuff with other people because it helps our lives so much. That how would you not want to share it with other people? You can't be alone. Yeah, Loneliness, yeah. it's a prevalent mm-hmm. disease even when you're married. And it's all a symptom of you not telling the truth. So you've got to say to someone out loud, you know what? I feel sometimes so alone. And that opens the door of emotional honesty. Yeah. And that's what our school's about. So we have the school you guys can come join. It starts only twice mm-hmm. a year, September and in January. And then we have the star community that's all year round. And then we have my book. That's it. (laughs) I love this. I love this so much. You have so many great resources to help people on their path. And and that's really, you know, like what visions and kind of events happened to us to put us on this path was really just hearing how important it was to help other people like the people that helped us to just get on get on a path where you are learning about yourself and you are doing the spiritual work. We teach Kundalini yoga and meditation. So um, so that was, you know, a big tool for us to learn how to really process and heal and, and like you said, like actually do the work. So I just love everything that you share that, that helps so many people to do that. It's so important. Yeah. If people would just give a commitment, like, listen, you didn't get thrown on the bus. Mm -hmm. You had a choice and you came with a chart that gives you a purpose. So you may not know it, but then seek a counselor. Go. We have all these certified astrologers for 200 bucks. You can have an hour and I've rigorously trained them. 
And then you once you get on, you realize you're not pushed on the bus and you've got your mission. Then you just have to see if you can keep your heart open. Yeah, Ugh. yeah. That's that. That well. That's the. This is the age where you got to keep your heart open. It's it's a it's a heart centered age, and I think a lot of people are really um, are really kind of feeling this happening to them, and it's almost like you got to purge a lot of your stuff though before you can really sit in compassion and love and feeling compassion and love for other people, um, let alone just yourself. You know. Especially ones you don't like. Yeah. Like I work a lot with our president. I really try to like mm-hmm. him. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god! And I'm. It's not easy. Mm-hmm. I do it every day. I I watch him and I love him and I fake it till I make yeah, it. Yeah. Well, you. I mean, that's the thing. That's what changes. That's what changed. Like you literally put out the love and the compassion and like you know for everyone and everything and and it does change the energy of the planet. And it sounds so um, spiritual, spiritual, mm-hmm. and woo-woo and all that stuff, but it is, in fact, the medicine. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wait, so Deborah, you were asking us before we got on about our charts. Did you want to read our charts or did you want to do some... some... Well, I don't know. Is your son the 12th house or the first house? My yeah. son is the 12th house. What's... Is it the 12th uh-huh. house? I'm almost positive. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Well, because you're a mystic. Mm-hmm. Like, you really have... You have a real split between wanting to be alone. You have that really mm-hmm. bad. Like everyone's alone. And then she's like, where is everyone? Yeah. And then <laughs> it's really confusing to myself sometimes. But yeah. But it's a dance. That's the Libra dance of in and out. And being permissive to say, I am so not interested in you. And then I am so into Like no judgment about you being a wishy-washy <laughs> ping pong game. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's, that very much explains. Mm-hmm. And then, and then Rit, your chart is leadership. It has to do with Somewhere in your family dynamic as a kid, it wasn't easy. Like there was some kind of split that occurred mm-hmm. that created a gap between your parents. Yes, they got divorced when I was 10. Yeah, so that young split, which is the clue of your sun and moon squaring each other, that's the indicator of, of parents leaving the child behind. But then you had to learn harmony. So then you spent your whole life trying to figure out relationship because you're obsessed with what went wrong. And so you're going to be able to be really good at relationship this life because it went so bad, you really value it. So true. Yeah. That is absolutely what happened and kind of put me on my path to wanting to learn so much. Exactly. So don't underestimate divorce as a path, a path of spirituality mm-hmm. or, or, or seclusion or reclusion or loneliness or being alone. That's also a spiritual path. We just judge everything. And the thing about astrology is it makes everything make sense. Yeah. Wow. I love that. Right. I know. It was, I don't know why I didn't ever piece this together, but my, so my mom, she got diagnosed with lung cancer and she actually passed away when I was 29. So that was the Saturn return. God. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. And when I was 29, her mom passed away and she came to me um, in my apartment the weekend that she passed and told me, whispered in my ear, kind of not whispering, but like very stern in her voice. It's time to go home to be with Britt and your mom. And I moved to LA like two, two months after that. And yeah, Britt and I started working together about a year later. Yeah. My whole skin, I had chicken skin everywhere. (laughs) So it's just what I said. So the recluse, your chart is a channel. The 12th house sun is the indicator of a Mm -hmm. channel. And then with Britt, because of the square, your attention in your chart Forced you to learn how to do relationship. Yep. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I crazy love that. How accurate. And I haven't even seen your chart. Well, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> that though. is crazy. <laughs> that Deb. was great. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Put yourself on the back. That was good. <laughs> you nailed it. You didn't even have to look look at the chart. <laughs> after forty years, I always talk about it. After forty years, if I'm not good at this, shoot me. I mean, really. <laughs> oh man. It was so sad if I couldn't figure out your charts. But then I am. From the mothership, I think I started off at a very young age looking at stars. Yeah, wow. This is so cool. So I think yeah, that was the best interview, you guys. That was the sweetest. That was a great podcast. And you probably know Yoga. What's her name? Yoga Girl. Yes. She did one podcast for me, and we had 3 million people like me on Instagram. That's how I made you oh, friends. Oh, my God. That's amazing. Well, we actually um, always have, like, two last questions that we ask, if you don't mind. Um, it don't just kind of goes at the end. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. okay. So um, the last one is, what is your favorite way to elevate yourself right now? Not eat food for four days and see how high I get. <laughs> the master cleanse. <laughs> 
Oh my goodness. It's it's do a cleanse from time to time and let yourself release yourself of the bondage of gravity. There is something to be said about letting the body have a pause. And I do it every year, every spring, and I do a colonic and I've been doing it. So that's part of why I don't look like I'm 65,000 years old <laughs> is because I kept my um, body in deep respect. I love that. And yeah, we're body. actually doing, um, I'm doing a cleanse coming up here in like the next week and we're actually getting colonics in the next week as well. It's a nice time to be cleansing the body, the springtime, the beginning of a new cycle. Won't be full of shit anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. I love the, <laughs> the pet comedian. <laughs> you should do like an astrology stand up. If- I know. Everyone says that. I know. I know. I don't know how to do it. I don't know. Those funny videos that have 7 million hits, they were just one set. And I did them without a director or producer. And they've gotten lots of air time. I don't know. Maybe I could be funny without a producer, but someone has to direct me and tell me what's funny. I don't know. <laughs> I just, I don't even know how I do it. That's a problem. <laughs> But I bet, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's funny. A lot of my Gemini friends are, are very much like you, just very fun, funny, and wacky. And when they tell me that I'm getting funnier, I'm like, this is, I must be getting, must be getting better. Yes. The keepers are really funny. <laughs> yeah. Like it seems like almost like in a dry way, in a way that like, isn't, it's not intentional. Probably like you are, it's probably not intentional. Yeah. It's just kind of like, it is what it is. Saying, never, saying the first yeah. thing up, what? What's the second question, ladies? Okay, so if you were standing on a stage with a microphone in your hand and the whole world was listening to everything that you were saying, what would be one thing that you would leave them with? I'd, I'd probably say, let there be tears. Let your heart open. I'm going to cry. Let the compassion be the center of your universe and watch the world change. You have to start by being compassionate for yourself. But the person that bugs you the most and the people that are the most destructive and the ones that are the most offensive, try and see if you can't open your heart. That would be, if you just practice that every day, it will change all of us. Oh, yeah. Oh, Deborah, that was so wonderful. I love that so I much. I felt like that opened up my heart even, so thank you. Yeah, my me too. Yeah. <laughs> and then lastly, so where can people find you? I don't know. I never know where I am. It's a problem. <laughs> I have an assistant, honest to God, I have an assistant who every day tells me what my schedule is. Sometimes I wonder if she didn't tell me. What you would do. Like, would I know <laughs> my day? I'm not, I'm so dependent on her. I call her mom. <laughs> mom, can I go out tonight? Can I go out tonight? <laughs> I, I really do. You think I'm making that up? Where can they find me? They can find me on, it's three words, DebraSilbermanAstrology.com. Perfect. And she's on Instagram at DebraSilberman underscore astrology. And she's on the star community. You just star community and you watch these videos. I've interviewed all these fascinating people each month Ooh. on their song. So you really learn about that song. I love it. So love. awesome. Uh, well, thank you so much, Deborah, for everything you shared. And we're so excited for everyone to learn from you more. And me too, me too. And if you guys want to know more about the school, you just go on and you become part of our mailing list. And here we go. Perfect. Awesome. <laughs> But you guys, the work you're doing for all of us is not to be understated. Every time your vibration sets us up on the elevator, it's a shift. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So that was pretty (laughs) wild and so fun. And we were just blown away by how well she was able to read us and just really everything we shared, we felt leaving where we left feeling so inspired. And we really hope that you guys did too. I know it was funny how she could just kind of look at us and kind of know things about our astrology specifically. So it's kind of one of those skills I'm working on, like be able to look at people and like know what kind of signs and energy, like you can see energy, but like tie it to astrology. I'm like, she's just good. For sure. she, said, she said something like, you know, like 40, she wouldn't be have done this for, if she wasn't good at it after 40 years, something was wrong or something. <laughs> I remember her saying that. I'm like, oh my goodness. So funny. Yeah. We were just laughing so much and yeah. just loving every minute of that. So with that, we'll head on into the lobby. So we're in the lobby. We are. 
And we're actually about to be in a lobby in Joshua Tree. <laughs> we are camp style lobby. I know, camp lobby. We are um, heading out to Joshua Tree this week to, you know, host our first Joshua Tree retreat, our sacred moon camp out under the Scorpio full moon. And can't wait to see how all the experience comes together because we've been planning it and we know it's going to be badass. But this is one of our favorite things to do is host experiences and retreats like this because we've seen just firsthand, you know, even at our Bali retreat, what happens and it's incredible. Insane. Like it's just such a fun energy to be in to like create this and like be part of this group consciousness that gets created and the ch- the things that happen to people are amazing. And you're like, people's literally like energy and lives kind of change in these, in these retreats. And it's cool to hold that space. It really is. Yeah. And it's just a testament to what happens when we create space and put in time and energy into our healing and into our transformation. And I think it's, it's really special when we can get away from distractions and our everyday life and just you know, dive in and really give back to ourselves. And, and yeah, the results are life-changing. So um, it's been fun to kind of follow a lot of the Bali retreat people. And some of them are very close to us. And we've just seen, you know, in just the craziest ways, how everything is different for them now than it used to be before. So, you know, with such a big group coming together for Joshua Tree, it really is so exciting to kind of, you know, get ready for it all, for all this beautiful energy. So if you guys are not coming with us yet, there are still some spots. So if you want to be spontaneous, make a last minute decision and just do it. Uh, check it out. And and if there's still spots left, you'll be able to get a ticket on the site. So head on over to elevatetheglobe.com forward slash the elevated camp. And we have some other really cool things that kind of came about we do. that are coming like orology. Yeah. Tribal markers is coming yes. for a whole like afternoon session with us. We're going to be, if you guys haven't heard of tribal markers yet, they do like markings of like with like on your body with like paint. And it's all non-toxic and all of that, but it's it's beautiful and it's a whole experience. And they'll take us through some meditations and things. And the orology, like you said, is literally aura photography. Yes. Yeah. So they capture your energy and you're actually able to read it because of the different colors and where they're placed and how large it is. And so... So yeah, it's a full, exciting experience that's all coming together. It's just kind of manifesting before our eyes as far as everybody that's coming together to be involved and all of the sponsors and fun gifts and and what's coming through for us as far as what we're going to be teaching. So, so yeah, we feel like, you know, if you've never done a retreat of any kind, we highly suggest you do one. So yeah, I'm I'm excited. We're doing an hour for this one. In Bali, we did a full day. Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, we're doing an hour silent experience, right? Yeah. Yeah. And um, when I first did my silent experience on a Costa Rica yoga retreat I went on a long time ago, I just received the most insane amounts of clarity and messages. And it was actually the first time I had ever really experienced, you know, the gift of silence in a really profound way. So, you know, we can just retreat and go within in all these different cool ways and explore what feels really good for you. But well, and the thing I think too, you get out of your comfort zone and you go somewhere mm-hmm. that's different um, and you can, it's somewhat cha- changing up your environment and doing healing work and spiritual work mm-hmm. and doing it with other people who are doing the same thing and interested in the same things mm-hmm. is very um, uplifting very quickly. So that's very, very interesting um, and, and cool to think about, you know? Right. So, yeah. And I think community too is just something that's been coming out, up a lot for us and just you know, creating your tribe and your community. And as you're elevating, just kind of attracting more people that you want in your circle and having people match your energy and just kind of getting clear on what you're looking to manifest as far as the people around you and how that affects you and everything. So, so yeah, I feel like that's another reason why we want to cultivate these in-person experiences to help facilitate just tribes coming together and really more support. 
because we hear it all the time and we we feel it all the time too, just how important it is to have more community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're excited to be out here for a couple of days in Joshua Tree out here. I'm already in the future. (laughs) Uh, but yeah it'll be it's going to be really really fun energy and so we encourage you guys to come with us um or you know just schedule an extra retreat we have bali retreat coming up too and we have a few spots left there so if you guys want to come out with us there bali in general is one of those places that like calls you joshua tree is too and i've been talking about this a little bit i I think about going Kauai is calling me right now. Like places like this that are like chakra points on the earth and have a lot of energy, they just kind of call you. So if you're being called to these places, like pay attention. There's usually some energy healing and work for you there. And you should just act on it and go. Like I'm going to book a Kauai trip because I I have to go. Australia is calling me right now. Yeah. And that's a healing place for you too, Britt. Yeah. Yeah. And my amazing mother and father-in-law are calling me to Kauai too. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So anyway. Justin's um, dad lives there. Yeah. Justin's dad lives there. It's funny, right? (laughs) Yeah. So cool. So yeah. So just pay attention to where you're feeling called to and, um, and we would love for you guys to retreat and go somewhere fun with us for Joshua Tree or for another one or Come visit us in LA. It's just so fun to meet so many more of you guys and take this incredible online connection that we have into into the flesh. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) So we love you guys. And with that, may May the the pure pure light within you guide your way on. Satnam. Satnam.